Well, we're back at the GSL for another week. Mm -hmm. um, this is unfortunately the last of these uh, GSL car contests that will ever be held, but it was also the biggest. Look at all the models. I can't believe how many models. This was the best car contest I've ever seen. This is Mark Gustafson, the founder of the Feast. He organized this car show years and years ago, and uh, he decided that this would be the last one he ever wanted to do. This week, uh, we're going to be looking at dioramas. Dioramas here at the show, but some other dioramas as well. Well, this is just totally amazing. It looks like a real garage. I know that garage. Oh, yes, we all do. I mean, in spite of the fact it's totally fantasy, if you're if you're into cars, if you're into hot rods, you know this garage. Absolutely. It's either your garage or it's one that you've visited. And that's the beautiful thing about dioramas. I think a, a diorama, a good proper diorama becomes a, what would you say, sort of a portal. Well, or a living photograph. Yeah, it's almost like, or, or like entering a Rockwell painting or something exactly. like that. Exactly. But it's this moment in time and the detail in the modeling. I think that's that's one of the things that I love most about dioramas is you can just keep adding detail and detail and detail and detail and just creating a, a living environment. Right. And I think all modelers build dioramas, or at least all types of modelers. Military modelers, they're well known for their dioramas, be it aircraft, uh, tanks, whatever. Of course, car modelers, we're looking at that right now. Oh, right. And uh, what is a model railroad if not a gigantic walk-in diorama? And the stuff that you do, uh, almost uh, in all cases, would be considered a diorama. Yeah, mine's just more whimsical is all. Yeah, but also uh, moments in, in your own history, the home you grew up in, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Now sometimes a, a diorama is really just a base to display a really incredible model like this beautiful motorcycle. Oh, I'll say. This guy built two of these. Wow. <laughs> They're identical. Uh, he built one to put in the diorama and then one just to be freestanding. But when I think of a diorama, this is more like what I think of. Right, something like this. It's a, and this, yes, this is an automotive subject, but it could just as easily be a scene on someone's model railroad. It could be anything. It could be where I got chased out of a lot when <laughs> I was a kid. Get out of there. Get out of that building. But again, it's the fun of creating a scene like this. All the little details and the rust and and just the the glorious fun of building a scene like this. And then trying out different techniques. Look at the, the mud and the tire tracks in the mud. Oh, no kidding. How did they do that and make it look so real? And that's the fun of it, is, is trying to figure out how to do that in the first place. Right. Grass like this and the collapsed building and the hay bales. Working out how you're going to do all of that. Sometimes it's just kind of fun to recreate, say, your own garage or whatever environment you like. Indeed. Look at the rat pink. I know. <laughs> I saw that. Or just a, a scene like this. Is this something that, that really existed? I doubt it. It's just fun to fantasize and create it. And again, trying out techniques. How do you do snow? Right. That and, one's a tough one. And mess around and just keep coming up with different ways to do that. Now, I love something like this. We have a little travel trailer, and I've actually built things like this, only more whimsical, but this is just cool. I love the, the scene here. Again, it's just it's a scene you feel like you could walk right into. Right. Oh my gosh, this is from The Great Race. I, uh, we, we have followed that history. Oh yeah. So much so that this is Tuesday's show. Uh huh. We're going to do a deep dive into this, this specific diorama and the history behind this. And this was just so fun to go, oh my gosh, look what they've created. Right, and look at the leaves and everything, <laughs> my goodness. So that's Tuesday's show. And then, of course, uh, we'll put a link here. We've already covered the, the Lynx project, a link to the Lynx. Yes. Um, but that, that whole project is dioramas. Right. I mean, these guys have built all of these amazing models, but 
the models are just part of these dioramas that create this history for this car, uh, all spelled out in diorama after diorama after diorama. And some of the best automotive subject modelers in the world came together to do this, and some of the best diorama builders in the world, too. And uh, needless to say, some of those are the exact same people. Right. <laughs> but one of the, the diorama builders here is uh, Ken Hamilton. Right. And I was hoping to see him here at the GSL. He did this. This is uh, Mark Gustafson driving a forklift. <laughs> and Ken built this for the diorama, but he built a lot of things for the diorama. Actually, he's done several dioramas that include Mark Gustafson. Right. Ken's been such a fixture here at this show, I was looking forward to seeing him, but he said he had another show to go to. Oh, wow. And he couldn't get away. This was the diorama that he entered in a very early uh, GSL. Look at the date, 1987. Oh, my goodness. And this was a horrible accident where somebody uh, accidentally crashed into a sign for the Southwest Challenge Model Car Show. And uh, here comes Mark Gustafson on a skateboard uh, chasing the ambulance as an accident attorney with his uh, attache case flying in the wind and a model car flying out of the, uh, the attache case. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but Ken uh, entered a lot of different uh, dioramas in the GSL over the years. Isn't this one fun? Oh, what? We used to see these around uh, in the 1950s when I was a kid. These World War II surplus airplanes, tanks, all kinds of things were readily available and they were getting used for all kinds of crazy things. I remember the Frosty Freeze and Nephi had an airplane wing for their sign. And this diorama, when he entered it, it just it completely blew my mind. It just completely action scene of a sprint car crashing and going into the fence. Right. Uh, it's so well executed and just, this, it's like a action photograph. Yes, been there, wild bills. <laughs> <laughs> over the years, he's, uh, he's created a lot of just beautiful, beautiful dioramas and entered them in the GSL. Right, and just given how small they are, the, the detail is just amazing. I think this was the first of these, but over the years he's done a whole series of these trailers. Uh, that just blows my mind, the attention to detail. And look what? at the rocker covers hanging on the clothesline that yeah. have been freshly painted. Yep, there you go. <laughs> This is another series of models that he's done, these fireworks, trucks and trailers. I guess in a lot of the country, instead of putting up firework stands, they have mobile fireworks stands, if you will, and they take them around as either a trailer or a truck. Oh my. Now these weren't entered in the GSL. This is just stuff that he's been doing. He just knocks out dioramas like, like crazy. Well, he's been my inspiration on many occasions. Now this is his latest project, uh, well he's working on a new one now, but this is the, the, the latest project that's been finished. It's another fireworks uh, stand, if you will, but it's a truck. A mobile fireworks truck, and it's based on a real truck. But look at the fun, fun details. That is just, what, you know? <laughs> and it's just, I uh, some of this, like the, the blowing up firecracker sign up there is all made of brass. And he uses the same technique that you use on a lot of things of printing and folding. Uh, print it off on your computer printer and then fold it up into a little box. Right. And now I'll tell you, that's a lot cheaper way to do it. Plus, it's fun to look stuff up. It is. And just check it out. The, the finished product is so amazing. Now, this is fun because every kid took one of their plastic models and strapped a firecracker to it and blew it up. 
In this case, he's got one all set to go. He's already built the plastic model. He's already strapped the firecracker to it. All you have to do is buy it, light the fuse, and blow it up. So which direction is that going to go, forward <laughs> or backward? All bets are off. I think it's going to go in all directions at the same <laughs> time. Over here, over there, over there, over here. Now this is just the folding table outside of the trailer that some of the firecrackers have been set up on. But the insane level of detail. Look at the folding mechanism for the chair and all of the, the bolts are represented by actual nut bolt and washer castings. Yeah, like how in the world? And notice his thumb, that gives you uh, some idea how tiny this uh -huh. is. Now the truck itself was built out of sheet styrene, again a technique that we've both used, but uh, you can just buy this sheet styrene at a lot of the hobby shops and cut it out and glue it together and there it is. That is amazing. And then the, the joy is always uh, putting lights in your model and, mm -hmm. then, uh, and then turning out the lights and going, oh my goodness. Yes, exactly. After the shadows fall, everything right. comes to life. It sure does. Now this diorama could technically, I guess, be considered a, a railroad subject. They've got this little 18 inch gauge tram that they're using to move the lumber and they've got this uh, lumber stacking machine. And that was the, the origin, the, the original idea for doing the diorama in the first place was to model the lumber stacking machine. And we all know this street. Yes, that was the main street in my hometown, I'll tell you what. It's just, it's so fun that he's modeled this dilapidated, run-down street. What blows my mind here are the overhead wires. Right. And they go right off the diorama and end in a point because he's used music wire here so that he can exactly shape it to the exact arc that he wants. And then when it runs off the diorama, he's just cut that off and it comes to a very sharp point. Wow. Here's the pick-apart uh, junkyard. <laughs> I love it. I love the vultures up there literally oh. picking the car apart. There you go. What a fun idea. I don't know if it's based on a real place, but it, it, I'll bet it is. Oh, it would have to be. But that's really cool. It's fun. Now, these last couple of dioramas are only a couple of inches deep. And the reason for that is he's designing his latest uh, dioramas so that they can sit on a very narrow shelf that's hanging on a wall or in fact just be hung on a wall. Oh, that's neat. That's a good idea. This is fun, the cosmic caps. <laughs> what do you do when you happen to have a couple of thousand spare 1 25th scale hubcaps laying around? Yeah, there you go. Well, everybody has seen these people who sell the used, <laughs> yep. the discarded hubcaps. Come in here and find a hubcap for your 76 Granada. Just feel free to root through the pile. <laughs> This is just amazing stuff. It really is an art form. Yeah, it's at some point what he's doing has crossed over into an art form. In fact, the reason he couldn't make it to the GSL is the show that he had to do instead was a gallery opening. Isn't that something? Wow. He is he has been invited to do shows, even one man shows in art galleries all over the East Coast, and his stuff has become highly sought after, and he is now uh, considered uh, you know what, an outside artist, a miniaturist. Right. But he's uh, showing this uh, his uh, dioramas in art galleries and selling it. Right, I imagine for a price too, because homemade. Wow. I'd be willing to bet. But here's uh, here's the show that uh, he couldn't. He had to attend one of these shows rather than the GSL. Well, and I'd like to attend one of those shows. No kidding. If it weren't on the East Coast. Well, heavens, that you go there by airplane, <laughs> rocket <laughs> ship, right? This is one of his better known dioramas uh, that was sold. I don't know for how much. One of my favorite things is watching how he does the lighting. In fact, I've tried to copy it a little bit. This reminds me so much of the one diorama you did. Right. And uh, the little eyeglasses here on the notebook and the hutch, just oh, mind boggling. Here's what the hutch looks like with the room lights turned on. Right, I, look at the outlet over there. Man, do you dare plug that in? 
and the miniature furniture yeah. all built out of basswood. Yeah, isn't that neat? Little sticks of basswood. Look at the phonograph. That's mind-blowing. And the, the records are uh, sheet plastic and he stuck a pin through the middle of that, mounted them in the chuck of his Dremel and then spun it around and carved the outside into a round disc and that's how he made his records. Oh my. But this phonograph and hutch and all of this stuff then goes into this room and uh, what an amazing room and then he's trying out different lighting techniques how does he want to light this so that it really comes to life when the when the room lights are turned on uh, look at the the shades yeah the dirt on the shades and oh my and here's the finished room with the finished lighting you would not know that that's not a real place it's uh it just comes to life. It does, the hideaway getaway. We all know this motel. Yes, unfortunately, we've stayed in motels like this one. Right, when we're lost and we're tired and there it is. And it's the only room available. Oh, but we've had some adventures <laughs> in those motels. I'll tell you what, they have a story. And notice the interior. It's got this full interior and then a couple of these rooms he wanted to completely dress out with full detailed interiors. Yes, he did a good job too. So you just start building and putting together uh, the guy in the bed here and then again the lighting just brings it to life. And here's the finished motel Woo. with the interiors in place. Good heavens, <laughs> <laughs> that is detailed. another CD uh, motel in this case a CD hotel uh -huh. complete with the flashing red neon sign outside oh my goodness but this one's even seedy oh yeah that one's uh, gone past uh, seed you know, this is just disgusting and look at the little details here yeah that is amazing detail I mean you can see by his thumb and the tweezers how tiny that is and it's one tiny little detail to go in, yet another diorama. Right. In this case, another one of these rundown rooms. Oh, yep, there it is. And, and speaking of there it is, there he is on, on the calendar. Oh, yeah. And again, the furniture made out of basswood, the little microscopic furniture. And look at the stairway. Oh, so that's how he does that. My stairs never turn out very well. And look at the paint peeling off the plaster wall. Right, and the plaster crumbling off too. It's just amazing. Right. And this entire stairway actually is somewhat hidden because it's inside the wall here. Right, but I bet you can see it from different angles and it goes all the way to the top. And that's the fun thing. You peer around and look through the open door and that whole stairway is there inside. Right. And this is one of his best-known dioramas, The Attic. Oh, boy, I can just see uh, Chevy Chase running around in there, <laughs> Christmas vacation. <laughs> when he got trapped in the attic. Right. But look, look at how this the, is put together, the spider web. Yeah. And all these wonderful little details, the plaster and lath. And then figuring out, again, the lighting effects. Right, the trap door that goes downstairs. And the light coming up through the trapdoor as the principal lighting source for the entire scene. Oh, yes. That's a gutsy move. Uh -huh. So here's, <laughs> here's the diorama with the lights turned off. And it's still quite handsome just all by itself without the lights turned on. But then when you turn the lights on, it really starts coming to life. Oh, that is the magical part. So here again is the, the light coming up from downstairs and the moonlight outside the window. But look what happens when you dim the room lights. 
That looks so real. Is that the most like, amazing oh, thing? Oh, Halloween. <laughs> oh, man. I can see why this was such a sought-after art piece. Right. Now, this is another artist's studio, but he's employed a technique here that just absolutely blew my mind, and it's something that I really want to experiment with. The studio itself is done to his usual scale, about a one half inch scale, one twenty-fourth scale, and all of the fun little details inside the studio here. And the artist is painting the view outside the window. Oh, look at that! So he's going to create that view. These are the fire escapes that will be outside in the alley. Wow! And they're done using a photo etch process. In this case, he found some that he could just buy in all of the scales that he needed, but you can also lay this stuff out on the computer and then send it off for photo etch. But he's got three complete sets of fire escapes, one in half inch scale, one in 48th scale, O scale, and one in 187th scale, HO scale. And then each building is done to a smaller scale creating a forced perspective outside the studio window. So look at the finished effect. Isn't that neat? And I'll tell you, doing that forced perspective, you need to be able to do some math and figuring. Well, you've done a lot of forced oh, perspective. and tore out what was left of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the finished product here, there again is what the artist is painting, the view outside the window. And even though the scene is only a couple of inches deep, it looks like it goes back there for blocks. Mm -hmm. Here's another one of those abandoned buildings. Wow. I followed the construction of this on his Facebook page. You can follow that Ken Hamilton on, on Facebook. But he went into every little detail of how he did this, creating the, the lath and putting plaster on the lath and putting paint on the walls and then peeling the paint back off and breaking the glass and creating the sink and just it's it's mind-boggling work of art wonderful mess <laughs> this is a business card holder you can see from the front there how tiny it is because business cards go in there for the harry a miller company ah. Uh, but he's done a lot of these building fronts. This is something he's doing a lot lately. Just a, a building front with a door, and these are designed so that they can hang on a wall. They're just neat. Because uh, in an art gallery, these are the sort of things that people uh, can readily buy because you can just hang them on a wall. Yes, it's a living picture, really. Here's another one of my favorites, the Playland Arcade. So an old arcade from the 1940s, 1950s perhaps, and it's gone out of business, and they're pulling all of the arcade machines out of here to haul off. And uh, the detail of the various arcade machines that are being removed from the arcade out in the street here, is this fun or what? Oh, that is just amazing. This, I think, is uh, for me the most amazing thing he ever created. He built this rat rod in 125th scale and then this little street scene to park the rat rod in. But you can stare at this picture until you turn green. You will not figure out that you're not looking at an actual rat rod parked in an actual street. Right, look at the cement crumbling and everything. It's perfect. Yeah, how does it's, he do that? You can just look at it until forever. Right. You will never find a breakdown point where you cannot tell that this is not a real scene. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, this fun look at the work of Ken, Ken Hamilton, his dioramas. 
If you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. Doesn't cost anything to subscribe. And if you, uh, if you really enjoyed this and you think your friends might enjoy it, do share. It's, uh, I think this is something that a lot of people would like to see. Anyway, the easy way to become a subscriber is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.